I will talk about a topic that is very close to my heart, which is energy efficiency and sustainability with motor-driven systems and in electrification. So um, I'll start with, can you start it slower or start? Yeah, it's a bit slow. Um, some of the major trends in sugar production that actually has an impact on those systems. So we all know that uh, environment is changing and we see a lot of weather dependency. So I'm coming from Sweden, which is a beet country, obviously, in the, in the Nordic uh, part of, of the world. And um, here I can see that there is heavy rainfall this summer, which has actually seen that not even all the beets have been able to, or we haven't been able to take them out of the fields. Um, at the same time, we see a lot of drought in, in many countries that is influencing the, the production capacities. Um, we have heard some of the speakers here today talking about also the balance between what is produced. So ethanol, sugar, and also energy uh, production is there, of course. And depending, depending on, on what, what, what part, part of the world, the world and, and, and what, what is, is actually uh, produced, uh, produced Season, season for season, season. This, this can, can, can change, change a fair, a fair few, few things, things on the production. On production. Energy, Energy efficiency is, is always, always there, there, of course, of course. and, and uh, reliability. reliability. Obviously, Obviously it's, it's very, very important, important when, when the production, the production season, season is ongoing, ongoing that, that it's, it's uh, no, no interruption, interruption whatsoever. whatsoever. Um, um, this, this will be very costly and have a huge impact. Safety is there. There is, there is uh, a, lot a lot of dusty, dusty environments, environments we, we have seen, seen in, in, in uh, historically. historically. There has, there has been, been some, some tremendous, tremendous um, accidents. accidents. And, and of course, these, these are things, things that, that we really don't want to, to see. To see. Um, um, we heard we also, also some from the previous, previous uh, speeches, speeches or, or, or talking, talking about, about digitalization. digitalization. I'll, I'll come back, back to this. And for me, that's important, of course, to see how much of the data that is available that, that can, can be transferred, be transferred into, into valuable, valuable information. information. That, that might, might be for commissioning, commissioning of, of, of equipment, equipment or, or it can, can be for uh, preventive, preventive, hopefully also predictive, predictive maintenance. maintenance. So, so um, what, 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 what we, we would like, like to see is, of course, how, how from my from role, role uh, in ABB, how, how we can support those challenges. So maybe I want to first to start a little bit about some, some, some impact, impact what we see from the regulatory, regulatory uh, frameworks. So, so two-thirds two of the world is actually, is actually under uh, some, some kind of, of influence of standards, of standards on motors. motors. Uh, uh, different, uh, different in different parts part of the world. Of the world. Um, so, so for, for instance, instance um, uh, here, here there is a minimum, minimum IE2 efficiency, efficiency level of the motors, motors in India. India. Uh, uh, other, other countries like China, China has the, the, the minimum of IE3. And, and in, in Europe, Europe, from, from uh, 1st of July, July last, last year, year there is uh, mandatory to have IE4 energy, energy efficiency for motors, motors between 75 kilowatt and, and 200 kilowatt. So, so obviously, obviously those, those things, things have a lot of impact, impact on uh, the, the operation. operation. And, and there, there is, is also um, um, various, uh, let's, uh, say, let's say, frameworks, frameworks when, when it comes to active design. If we look in general, I would, I would say more, say more than 90% of, of global food, food producers, producers have, have set, set some kind of targets on uh, sustainability. sustainability. Most, Most of them, them on, uh, let's say, CO2 neutrality, neutrality so a certain year, year with, with a certain, uh, uh, let's say, say frame, frame or, or, or so around it. it. But, but on the on eco-design, design, which, which is mandatory uh, uh, in, in, in Europe, Europe um, we also, we also as, as, as a company, company we, have we have provided a lot of tools for this. So, so uh, uh, for, instance, for instance, on this, on this eco, -design eco design tool, tool that we developed, developed is a progressive, progressive web, web application, application uh, where, where, for instance, you can look, can look at, at motor efficiency, efficiency at, uh, and, and, and also and losses, losses at, at uh, different, different operating, operating points. points. And, and the combination, of course, of with, with, with the VSDs, the VSDs is, is there. there. So, so um, that's, that's, that's one, one thing. thing. Um, what we have also, uh, make, sure, make sure, of course, that, that we have a full, full portfolio, portfolio of I3, I4, I4 and, and even I5 efficiency, efficiency motors. Motor. So, so I wanted, wanted to, to, uh, to uh, say a few words of the I5. We have, we have seen, seen that's also been implemented, implemented in, in some of the sugar, sugar mills. mills. 
with, with very, very short, short return, return of, of investment, investment actually. actually. And, and uh, from, from last, last year, year, we have, we have um, also, also safety, safety IE5 models, models which, which is certified, certified from the IEC EX and, and also ATEX standards. standards. What is what the, the good thing, thing with those, those motors, motors um, is, is that, that they, they have, have not only high energy efficiency, efficiency they, they also have additional, additional uh, value points. points. So for instance, they run cooler, uh, which means that they have a longer lifetime. Um, th they are PM motors, motors, so they, so they are, combined are combined with, with uh, uh, variable, variable speed, speed drive, drive uh, to be able to be uh, run. Um, they do not, though, contain uh, this rare earth metals, so they are, are a magnet-free rotor, which is also, of course, from a cost perspective, uh, beneficial. There are also other things that they are, are quiet, they, they run quietly, and they can be used in a high density of, of power, which means it can also be um, a, a smaller one from, from the footprint perspective. So um, they're available in, in, a, in a wide range. So this is one of the examples of technology, what, what we have developed that will come in uh, good uh, for this uh, sustainability topics. And next thing I wanted to address is cooling towers. Obviously, cooling towers is, is um, a, a thing that is, is in most of the sugar plants. Uh, we have installed this uh, kind of, let's say, neat solution in several sugar plants. We have also actually um, one installation in Pune at, at the hotel, at the Marriott Hotel, where we have shown that we can reduce the energy uh, consumption with 35%, but at the same time also reducing drastically the maintenance need and uh, definitely also, of course, uh, these, uh, let's say, reduce noise. So what is the beauty of this is that um, the motor which is there is a very special motor uh, that can run at very low speed, so up to 100 RPM. and. Uh, we can actually replace uh, what you see on the left-hand side, which is the setup what, what, what we, we see, see. Um, in, in most plants, where you actually have a motor with a drive shaft and the gearbox is uh, under the blades. So with this motor, we can replace um, uh, all the, this part which is on the, on the left-hand side, and you add the blades on top of the motor directly. So it is also um, a good solution that can uh, be implemented. Um, the next one I wanted to highlight is uh, for harmonics. Of course, we know that um, harmonics is an issue. Um, it has various sources. So one source is, of course, if the, the can come from the grid. Uh, but it's also actually the variable speed drives that induce the harmonics into the network, which can cause problems. Um, and in order to prevent damage to other equipment and in interference, uh, we have developed this so-called ultra-low harmonic drive, which means that it's actually an active filter uh, included in the drive itself. It means that we are also up to fulfilling all the global standards there are on harmonics. And uh, it brings down the harmonic content to less than 3%. Since this filter, the active filter, is inside the drive itself, it also reduces the installation uh, footprint um, if you compare to having a separate filter. And uh, also, of course, having everything into one unit makes it uh, more reliable uh, because of the solution. And it's a very simple thing to install. Um, it, is, it comes with um, a good ease, ease of use. Uh, the next technology I wanted to introduce to you um, is for irrigation and uh, especially then for, for cane, cane fields. So uh, as, as previous speaker was also mentioning, I think it's important to talk about um, across the value chain so that we can look at all parts. So this part is addressing the first uh, on the farm side where actually we have those so-called solar pumps drives um, that can be connected to solar panels and can be used off-grid. 
uh, with a high reliability. We have a, f a full portfolio of that. So of course, uh, taking down the energy consumption, but also having the, the capability then to really uh, replace some what comes from the grid. So um, it contains a lot of smart embedded functions and it's also something that is easy to commission and, and to use. And there is a lot of, let's say, application knowledge brought into this solution. Then I also wanted to address the digitalization. Um, of course, condition monitoring for the drives. That's uh, something that it's, it's important. It can be used during commissioning. Um, for instance, during pandemics when we could not travel, we could use this uh, remote monitoring for commission um, a sugar uh, centrifuge drive, which is a, a, a regenerative drive, a very, I mean, complicated from that perspective, but that was still possible. And, um, and this, this um, uh, remote monitoring would, of course, also be interesting for uh, condition monitoring and to have preventive and predictive maintenance. So what we do is that we are utilizing the data that is actually produced from the drive to see a lot of things. I mean, fleet overview, trends, there can be thresholds been set. And uh, of course, uh, also we are summarizing this into a few parameters so that you can see with the traffic light uh, whether everything is, is running smoothly. If it turns yellow, you can see that some of the parameters is, is um, having a, a trend that is, is not optimal. And then you can go in and uh, really look at um, a very deep technical level. But it can also be set threshold so that, uh, of course, uh, we um, get information via text message or whatever that, that something is, is not going uh, fully right. We have also utilized information from the drive to see things uh, that is on the application side. And here I wanted to, to mention for, for centrifugal pumps, for instance, that uh, we have um, an algorithm that can detect uh, cavitation. So if um, the torque is changing uh, after a certain pattern, um, and uh, we know that there is a cavitating pump that, that will be actually um, informed to the system and can be followed up. But all in all, um, there is a lot of, of information, of course, that can be available from this kind of, of system. So um, on the motors, there is also um, something that, that is um, similar to this. And um, that's actually a sensor that can be put on the, on the fins of the motor. Um, it has a very, I mean, it's also IP66. And what you do is you can measure a fair few parameters directly, but also some parameters will be as uh, calculated as a consequence or, or uh, combine this information. And um, as you see on the, on the right there, things that we are measuring is vibration, speed, operating hours, number of starts, um, etc. So we can actually see the, the load, um, which means that sometimes we have the tendency to, let's say, have a lot of margin on our uh, design of motors. And maybe we will find out that next time when this motor needs to be changed, that we can actually have a smaller size. So um, that's, that's also one of, of the benefits of this. And you can measure either via a mobile app or via a gateway where information is, is gathered so you can see whole fleet combined uh, a lot of this, this uh, let's say, critical motors that would be there to make sure that we are not seeing any, let's say, expected stops. So. Um, uh, really reduce the, the risk of unplanned, uh, unplanned stops. So those would be a few things um, that I wanted to share with you here today. And to conclude, I think that it's important to use the, the latest technology to make sure that we are um, always on the front edge and at uh, the challenges from the, the sugar production can be met um, in many different ways and what we have heard here from the panel today. So with that, 
I would um, like to thanks and, and conclude my speech. <laughs>